So the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 was my favorite super shoot release of 2022, but after 200 miles, has this thing run its course? What is up guys, Andy Forrest Team Runner here. Welcome back to another video. And today we're taking a look at the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 after 200 miles. I wanna tell you something. So the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 was one of my favorite running shoes of 2022, but after 200 miles, I fear that time is running out for this thing. I put incredible miles into this thing during my London Marathon training block, set a course PB at the Seven Bridge Half Marathon, and I have to say, this is the closest thing I have found to the Next% Percent version one, which is my all-time favorite racing shoe. So this has high, high praise. I'm excited to see what else Saucony do, but for now, we're looking and focusing on the Pro version three, and what an update this has been. I can't sing this thing's praises highly enough, but let's dive into the wear and tear, how I've been using it, will I continue to use it moving forwards, and all of that good stuff. So if you're excited for today's video, guys, make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content, and let's start with the wear and tear. So let's kick start with the wear and tear. We'll start with the good bit because the top bit is absolutely fine. The upper is holding up really, really nicely. No snags, no frays, no tears in this thing whatsoever. And I still get a really, really solid lockdown in this shoe. I still want to lace it up. I still feel good lacing it up and it still delivers a really comfortable fit. The midsole I feel has slightly lost some of its edge, but it's still really soft and springy. It's still feeling good. I feel like when I'm, uh, when you're kind of going through that phase where you land and spring off, you kind of lost a little bit of propulsion, um, but it's still super soft and super springy, and the carbon plate I still feel is really effective. I still feel everything that I used to feel in the shoe is just kind of dampened down a little bit. So. Definitely, if I was to race in this shoe, this wouldn't be first choice anymore, and it's not something I would probably consider racing in now, just because it's lost that edge. It would certainly go probably towards the bottom of the pile, but definitely still fine for training. It's the grip that's causing me the biggest concern and making me wonder how much more I can get out of it. So obviously at the base of the shoe there is absolutely fine. If I run through here, you will see it's all good until we get towards the top. Now, if you guys saw my 100 mile update on this shoe, you'll notice that I highlighted the fact that it was going a little bit bold at the top here and the tread was wearing quite thin, but it wasn't causing me any concern because I didn't find any loss of traction. Well, interestingly, the last couple of runs I had in this shoe, I just started to notice it was getting a little bit slick and this recent run that I've done, which was 16 miles <clears throat> at marathon pace in my build up to my Newport Marathon, it was quite lethal, if I'm brutally honest with you. I'm not gonna be too dramatic, but it did feel like on some points, I was wheel spinning. Now, I'm not sure if it's the kind of anti-skid stuff they put in the newer tarmac, or whatever, but the Lydney Docks Road where I like to run on with Matt sometimes has been resurfaced recently and it feels fine down there, nice and tacky, nice and grippy. But as soon as you get off that surface, either end on what I would call older tarmac or onto the pavements, it was quite a wet day that day or the surfaces were wet, it was very slick indeed. I felt a massive lack of traction and it was very dicey going round corners. And the bold spot I had at the top in after 100 miles was really just about that big, but it really is kind of spreading down to around here. And even some of the areas down the side here and here are wearing down as well. So I feel like traction in this shoe has almost but gone, or pretty much gone. And so the only way I could continue to use it moving forward will be to migrate it over onto something like those light trails that I like to run on around here. So how have I been using this shoe? Well, from the 100 mile update to the 200 miles uh, point that we're at now, it's predominantly been used for workouts and long runs. That's it, nothing else, nothing more. That is what I've been using this shoe for. So after the Seven Bridge race, I didn't, haven't used it for racing uh, since that was back in August last year. Um, but I've got to be honest with you, it's been an absolute go-to uh, when I've wanted to lace up for a workout. I just, I really love this shoe. And I've got workout shoes, I've got training partners, I've got training shoes but I often find myself gravitating towards this thing because I love it. And one of the reasons I think is because the, uh, the difference between the Speed 3 and the Pro 3 is now so much more prominent. It's like such more of a bigger gap. Whereas in my previous versions of the Pro 1 and Speed 1, I found like the Speed 1 could handle pretty much everything the Pro could do. And I just slip on the Pro for, to, for race day, get a little bit more pop from the carbon plate 
a tiny bit lighter and just kind of feel like a tiny bit of benefit but I feel like the difference now between the Speed 3 and the Pro 3 has meant that I haven't been able to use the Speed 3 where I would have used the Speed 1 so this has kind of taken over the mantle of putting in the workouts instead of what I would have done with the Speed previously so it has rocketed to 200 miles pretty quickly or a lot further or a lot faster I should say than the previous version of the Pros that I had and I've loved every single second so yeah it's been an absolute staple of a workout shoe and of course a super comfortable long run shoe. So will I continue to use this shoe moving forward? After all I've talked about, am I gonna to continue to put the miles in this shoe? Well, I guess I'm kind of on the fence really. And I think the best answer I can give you guys is I'm probably gonna throw a few more runs into this shoe scattered here and there, but I'm certainly not gonna make a point to take this thing up to 300 miles. I feel like everything about this shoe is still holding up really well, but I feel like the grip is just the, the area that I don't feel comfortable in. It's exactly like what happened with the Vaporfly version one. Uh, after 200 miles when I raced uh, the new at nine in that shoe and I absolutely hit the deck really well because the grip and the tackiness off the bottom of the shoe completely disappeared. That's exactly how I feel with this thing now. So the only way I would continue to use this shoe is probably gonna be out on the trails out on the light dusty fire track trails that I use a lot of my shoes on to do some workouts and that will come in the summertime because the bounce is still there, the plate still feels great, the upper still feels good but I just feel like now I can't really trust this grip and it does feel a little bit disconcerting and it certainly did towards the end of that long run on the weekend. So I kind of feel like it's got life left in it, it's got plenty of life left in it if you think about the midsole and the plate in the upper all of that's great, it just needs a bit of a new refurbed outsole which I know a lot of you guys have commented on before on how you can do that with shoe goo and stuff like that, which is a great idea. And I feel like if you want to, you can certainly do that. It's definitely got plenty of life left in it. For me, I think I'm just gonna start to prioritize other shoes that I have in my rotation, like the Magic Speed 2 uh, and the Hyperion Max, stuff like that, to get those up in higher in the mileage and put this one to one side for now. So would I recommend this shoe? Who do I think this shoe is for? Well, if you love the next percent and you can't get hold of the version one, anymore and you're kind of a little bit on the fence of version 2 or you love the version 2 but want to try something new this is the one to try I direct everybody to this shoe that's saying I love the next percent but I do fancy trying something else this is a very similar feeling great midsole foam similar pop similar ride everything about this shoe reminds me of the next percent one and for me it's been just such a massive step forward uh, for Saucony in terms of I felt the pro one I didn't try the Pro 2, but the Pro 1, it was great. I loved it to the point where I, I even enjoyed the feeling of running in it more than the next percent because I loved how firm and fast it felt. But ultimately, I never felt quite as efficient, whereas this shoe, I've always felt as efficient in the next percent. Whether I am or not, I don't know. I'm probably, probably the next percent is slightly more efficient, but I have to say, this is an absolute worthy contender to be up there. So if you're fancying a change from Nike, and you want something different from the next percent, this is the one to go for. There's nothing else that I've run in that comes close in terms of how sort of fast, light and nimble it feels. This is an absolute dream. And I'd absolutely love to hear how you're getting on with your Saucony Endorphin Pro 3s. Have you found the same as me? Have you put as many miles in them? Have you found that the grip has completely gone? I'd love to know because of course we always know with racing shoes, they are the lightest package that the companies can offer and they do kind of uh, not skimp on the materials, but they do kind of cut things back to save weight and things and so we know the grip isn't going to be quite as good as the more tra uh, the more durable training shoes that we get sold so we know these things are going to go over time i feel like what's happened with this shoe is it's still the the majority of the shoe is still in great uh, great condition but it's just that outsole that's sadly lacking so i'd love to hear if you guys have done the same as me got to like around my mileage found that the grip's gone have you continued to use it in training do let me know and let other people know down in the comments below. That's it from me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider giving it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Until then.